Hello? Hello? Let the tuning commence. Hey guys, Happy New Year! Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at The Strangers as featured in Alex Poyer's 1998 sci-fi thriller. Dark City starring Rufus Sewell, Kiefer Sutherland, Jennifer Connelly, Richard O'Brien and William Hurt. The Strangers were essentially a hive-minded alien species that were the main antagonists of the film who possessed incredible powers and advanced technology. While they were a superior species, they were also a dying race trying to adapt and withstand their oncoming extinction. Having observed the individuality of human beings, they believed that the solution to their plight lied somewhere in the human psyche, and as a result, they arranged a grand experiment to delve into the forces behind human personality and memory, experimenting at length on the humans they had been able to abduct in an attempt to find some insight that could potentially save their race. And as such, they spent much of the film orchestrating events from behind the scenes, only revealing themselves when they have no choice but to intervene directly. Outwardly, the strangers are uniformly pale, bald individuals dressed in form-concealing black coats and wide-brimmed hats. Their behaviour was unusual and the group often demonstrated a variety of eccentric mannerisms, but from the outside, they all looked human. However, these were only the vessels that they used to interact with humanity and protect their true selves. As in reality, the strangers were transparent, jellyfish-like entities that had permanently adopted their current host bodies for use in understanding and hopefully imitating human individuality. The Stranger's most prominent trait is their telekinesis, which is powerful enough to warp physical materials on a molecular level. In their culture, it's referred to as tuning, and every stranger possesses some capacity for it. Individually, most use it only to form doorways to infiltrate human dwellings, occasionally levitating in order to bypass obstacles and travel swiftly around the city. While the species functioned as a hive mind, Mr. Book was evidently the most powerful, demonstrating strength enough to levitate and move physical objects, warp the city's technology on his own, and telekinetically fling human beings around like ragdolls. However, the strangers performed their best work as a whole, interfacing with the internal mechanisms of the city in order to reshape it, conjuring new buildings and new structures for their captives to inhabit. Along with their telekinetic powers, they also possessed a mild form of telepathy, most commonly used for influencing the minds of others. Though it should be noted that they can't actually control human beings or read their thoughts, but merely force their captives to lose consciousness by placing a hand over their faces and commanding them to sleep. As with much of their powers, this can also be utilised en masse at a moment's notice before the tuning commences, with the city's mechanisms allowing them to send every single human resident to sleep. However, over time, some test subjects developed an immunity to the sleep-inducing signal, not only remaining awake during the tuning, but also resisting direct attempts to induce unconsciousness by individual strangers. Though the species had immense psychic powers and additional resilience granted to them from the bodies of their hosts, the strangers also possessed a number of serious weaknesses. For starters, the true parasitic form of the stranger would reside in its vessel's skull, ensuring death if the head was penetrated or cleaved open. Strangers also cannot tolerate water, with moist, humid environments repelling them and direct exposure to water killing them instantly. This, I believe, is a severe handicap considering that their test subjects cannot live without water. Similarly, the strangers cannot withstand sunlight and have gone so far as to turn their city away from the sun it orbits, trapping the human population in perpetual midnight, a fact that they only fail to notice thanks to the strangers' additional ability to alter memories. But this one was different, yes? What has the doctor to say about this? He has failed to report in. And Mr. Quick? No more, Mr. Quick. Mr. Quick, dead. Yes. A hive-minded species, the strangers congregate in vast numbers in their laboratories beneath the city, discussing current events in Senate-like gatherings. Having originated from a world where individuality did not exist, many of its members began adopting individual traits into their society in their attempts to mimic their human test subjects, such as the concept of dissenting voices and personal names. Though all of them possessed the ability to tune to some degree, their powers were best utilised when gathered in large numbers, where they could focus their telekinetic energies to alter the structure of their local reality on a massive scale. It's for this reason that when they were in the field, the strangers would tend to work in groups of at least three or four. 
Personalities among the strangers tend to be rudimentary and experimental at best, as all of them have adopted names, but they primarily seem to be based on random objects, as seen with Mr. Book, Mr. Hand, Mr. Sleep, and so on. Their lack of understanding in how human individuality worked also meant that while they'd adopted certain personality traits, there was rarely any depth to them. In saying that, there were of course a handful of exceptions to this rule, like Mr. Sleep, who demonstrated a proclivity for sadistic activities throughout the story. In the film, Mr. Sleep is seen eagerly clicking his teeth at the prospect of fighting. He also mutilates the corpses of prostitutes, attempts to get John to fall from a ledge by biting his hand, and, when the strangers finally capture John, Sleep is the first of them to demand his execution. The other known exception to this rule is Mr. Hand, who demonstrated curiosity and fascination with John Murdoch, eventually risking death by accepting John's original memory imprint in order to learn more about him. This man Murdoch is more powerful than we thought. He is becoming like us. So we must become like him. Apart from these crude attempts at demonstrating personality, the strangers were otherwise uniform in their overall behaviour. Most of them tend to speak in unnerving monotones and have a habit of ending their questions with the word yes. Occasionally, they chatter their front teeth as if signalling to one another, an activity they perform en masse while tuning, often causing the entire laboratory to resound with the echoes of chattering teeth. Little is known of the stranger's past history, their home planet, or even the true name of their species. All that can be confirmed is that they discovered that their kind was on the verge of extinction, their hive mind unable to withstand the unexplained disaster whittling away at their numbers. Leaving their world en masse, the survivors travelled the stars in search of a cure and eventually discovered humanity. Recognising the individuality of human beings, they came to believe that there was something in them that might be able to save their people. Wanting to capture this to preserve their species, the strangers formed an immense space station, modifying it to resemble a human city that was perpetually stuck in the 1940s. Disguising their true forms with human corpses, they abducted several thousand humans from Earth and made them residents of the city, erasing their memories and regularly imprinting them with new ones in order to investigate the origins of human personality. With little understanding of human psychology, they needed an expert on the human mind to synthesize and mix these memories, and so they abducted a gifted psychologist named Dr. Daniel Schrieber to complete the last step in their testing. Though they allowed him to retain his skills and personality, they erased his memories of the past, ensuring that he could never find a way back to Earth should he ever escape their control. It's alright, I can help you. Who is this? I am a doctor. No, you must listen to me. You have lost your memory. There was an experiment. Something went wrong. Your memory was erased. Do you understand me? No, I don't understand. What the hell is going on here? While human society continued unabated throughout the city, the strangers remained at work in the laboratories below, their factories churning out countless personal items and documents used to enforce the illusion of a past on their captives. Because light was deadly to their kind, the strangers kept their station angled away from the sun it orbited, leaving the city in a state of perpetual darkness as mentioned earlier. However, thanks to the altered memories and social conditioning of their jailers, none of the human inhabitants of the city ever noticed the absence of daylight. Likewise, though all of them remembered an idyllic seaside paradise known as Shell Beach, none of them remembered how to get there, and none of them seemed to question the curious lack of city limits or external train routes. Every so often, the strangers would shut down operations above ground for a mass tuning, rendering their captives unconscious while they went about adjusting the city's layabout and replacing the memories of its inhabitants. Over the course of a single tuning session, entire buildings would melt, merge, or simply vanish to make way for new structures, while downtrodden members of the working class would find themselves unexpectedly transplanted into the financial upper crust of the city and given memories indicating that they'd always been as rich and powerful as their situation indicated. Occasionally, one of their test subjects would wake up in the middle of a tuning process, having developed an immunity to the stranger's sleep-inducing signals after years of constant exposure. Most of them spent their days wandering the city like lost children, struggling to process what they'd seen over the course of the tuning. Unfortunately, almost all of them were believed to be insane by their fellow citizens, an impression only worsened when they attempted to draw attention to the changes made by the strangers. After many years of experimentation, the strangers eventually decided to study the nature of memory and free will to see how and if the two were related. One of these experiments involved the creation of records and evidence of a serial killer, complete with the bodies of murdered prostitutes, and the imprinting of a test subject to see whether they would continue on the path established by these memories or diverge from them completely. As has already been mentioned, the strangers possessed highly advanced technologies. Not only were they capable of warping the layout of a city and rendering its human inhabitants unconscious, but they'd also mastered a unique technological art for deleting memories and creating new ones, physically condensing memory into a physical substance that can be injected into the human brain by needle. Miraculously, through this process, they can rearrange the identities of their captives at will, allowing them to test the role memory plays in human individuality. 
Ironically, their attempts to save their species by messing with humanity ended up being their downfall, as continuous exposure to their telekinesis and telepathy granted Murdoch the same abilities they had as a collective, enabling him to challenge their entire group on his own. Dark City is a visually stunning, nightmarish adventure that uses the strangest to contemplate the very meaning of human existence, and explores myth and memory to tap into the fears and desires of our collective unconscious. This is another one of my cult movie favourites that I highly recommend that you guys check out, as its blueprint has influenced many thought-provoking films that use memory to make us question reality. <sighs> is what happens when you start messing with the physics of it all? Well, that's all for today, folks. Big thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the strangers featured in Dark City. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.